Welcome to the Streetwise Property Pulse, your weekly resource for the latest Ontario financing and real estate investment updates, where we provide you with timely updates and perspectives from leading real estate practitioners, answer your burning questions, and share with you valuable tips and strategies. This is Dahlia Barsoom from Streetwise Mortgages. Today's episode is the third of a multi-week series of our tour of Ontario, looking at the impact of the pandemic on the individual investment markets. We're speaking with Chris Shabib from Venture Property Investments, covering areas in the Durham region, including Ajax, Pickering, Oshawa, Whitby, and Clarington. Chris is going to shed light on the trends that he's seeing in these markets, including the trends with respect to sales, values, days on market, and his predictions for the next 60 days. Hi, my name is Chris Shabib. I started investing over 25 years ago. My wife and I bought our first flip in 1992. We gutted that place and we sold it for a profit and we were hooked ever since. Since then, I've done wholesaling, RTOs, more flips, uh, secondary suites, burr in both residential and in multifamily. I currently invest in the West in Hamilton and North in Simcoe County, and of course in Durham region, which is phenomenal. I feel really fortunate in the last couple of years I've been able to train hundreds of investors on how to invest in real estate safely and securely and help many, many of those families create personal wealth for themselves and their future generations through real estate investing using those systems that have proven over time to be scalable, repeatable, predictable results in real estate investing. All right, so what is going on in the market right now? What are the current trends? I'm gonna start on a macro level year over year, um, start to drill down into both geographic and then segments of the market to gain clarity um, as we kind of drill down. So starting year over year, January 2019 to January 2020, we saw an increase of 12.63%. That is natural based on the trend that we've been seeing since 2017 and the correction that happened there. Now, May 2019 to 2020, we see an increase of 4.03%. So not quite as dramatic as January to January. The May to May is still an increase, but not as much. Now let's drill into January to May in 2019 versus January to May in 2020. So January to May 2019, we see an increase of 5.93%. That is natural. That's what we expect when we head into that spring market. Fast forward one year to the current year, 2020, January to May, we see a slight decrease of 2.2%. So COVID did have an impact. Um, We can attribute it to that. Um, And it wasn't a massive impact, but where we would normally see an increase headed into the spring market, this year we saw a slight decrease, Uh, not a, a large adjustment, but a little bit of a decrease. Now let's drill into the Durham market a little bit more. So Durham, uh, if we just look at the cities running from west to east, they go Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, Oshawa, Clarington. We see this natural decline as you move further east from Toronto in in the average sale price. So Pickering to Ajax drops on average 9.65%. Ajax to Whitby on average drops 5.57%. We see this unusually low drop headed into Oshawa, where it drops from Whitby to Oshawa, the average price and detached drops 25.27%. And then it jumps back up from Oshawa into Clarington, up 9.38%. So what does that mean? For residential buyers, that means that we literally have this kind of proximity to Toronto and price ratio going on where we can pick the size of a home, the price of home and the proximity to Toronto and just find that sweet spot. For investors, it's a little bit different. We want to know those, you know, that that kind of average lowering of, of price in those cities moving from east to west, but we want to watch our purchase price to rent ratio much, much closer on the investor side. In both cases, though, Ottawa represents this unique opportunity. There's reasons why it is an anomaly as you move from west to east. Um, and there's more to be said about that, but for now, just recognizing that there is a drop in Oshawa and that does represent some opportunity, both for residential and on the investing side. So let's drill into that a little bit more. So above 600,000, the average sold price compared to listing is just a percent below, meaning that they're going slightly under ask on average. The listings from, uh, we saw the listings from as COVID hit, they dropped 61%. We're seeing that ramp back up right now. 
listings from March to this week that just passed is up 1800%, meaning, you know, that's that sounds like a huge number. Um, it's, it's not quite as dramatic as that. That's the actual math. But, you know, we're seeing the listings ramp up as we start to open up the economy. We're seeing a lot more inventory hit the market. Now, let's look at days on market and months of inventory to see about the supply and demand and what that ratio is doing. Days on market in this above 600,000 segment is 19 on average. Months of inventory, meaning if the inventory stopped coming onto the market, the demand stayed the same, how many months of buying is there left? So on average in this last week, there's 2.17 months of inventory on the market, meaning it's fairly balanced. If we look at June on average though, which is a more accurate me metric to look at, it's 1.35. So for a little context on this months of inventory, 1.35 represents still a seller's market, meaning anywhere under six weeks is a seller's market. Anywhere in that six to call it nine, 10 weeks of inventory is fairly balanced. Anywhere beyond that nine, 10 week mark is probably more of a buyer's market. So we're at on average in June, 1.35 months of inventory in that above 600,000 within Oshawa, meaning it's still a seller's market. And the days on market of 19 is reasonable for that, uh, for that months of inventory. So the two of those data points are marrying together fairly well. Um, and I'll talk about what this means in a second, but let me cover the under 600,000 now. So again, same week, June 14th to June 20th, under 600,000 detached homes in Oshawa. Average sold price is 2.01% above the list price. Um, listings again has jumped dramatically since March, uh, where it had dropped down 61%. Days on market, average 10. Uh, months of inventory is 1.3 months of inventory for this last week, if we extrapolate it from that. On average in June, under 600,000, the segment we're looking at right now, the average is about 0.8 months of inventory. So again, that's well under that six, seven week mark. So it is definitely a seller's market still in that segment. So now within that lower than 600,000 purchase, let's look at investment properties specifically. Um, so I'll give you two examples. One, a couple of weeks ago, listed for 454, sold for 505, 51,000 over ask with 14 offers. Now they held offers. Um, that represents an 11.23 increase in the price over the listing. Uh, so fairly aggressive. They held offers, so days on market isn't as relevant there. Second example, a uh, home listed for 479. This was a convertible home again for a secondary suite, listed for 479, sold for 500, 21,000 over ask with five offers, one day on market. So they weren't holding offers on this one and it went very, very fast. Same day, 21,000 over ask. So we know that when in that lower than 600 market, it's a little more aggressive than the above 600 market in terms of the demand um, versus supply. And then we know that within that lower than 600 market, that the investor market is even more um, aggressive, meaning the demand is far out surpassing the supply based on the number of offers and the price, uh, the, the sold price over list price. All right, so what do I anticipate for the next couple of months in terms of the market and what's going on in real estate? I'll share with you what we know today and how we can extrapolate and think about possibilities and probabilities in the future. What we know today is that we're experiencing the same thing that other countries have already gone through that are a few weeks ahead of us in terms of opening up their economy and coming out of COVID. And that is that there's a pent up kind of demand there and it comes in the form of more listings, but also more purchases. Um, and I think we can anticipate seeing more of that in the next couple of months. That's what we're seeing in other countries as well. Um, and so what do we think is gonna happen going forward? And what are the recommendations? That depends on what segment you're in. If you're in the residential market and you need to make a move, it's your life. This is a life decision. And I would say in this market that we're in with the data that we have, make that move if you need to make it. If you're more comfortable holding off, you could take a couple of months, gather more data and see if you have that option. But in that residential market, and you, when you need to make a move, like my recommendation, live your life, make that move, especially if it's one that's time sensitive. In the investor market, Let's look at what um, what strategy you have, right? If you're in a flipping market um, or you're in student rentals even, um, or in pure commercial real estate, these things are more affected by what's going on and the trends that are happening in the market. 
for example, in flipping, we might see a correction come up soon. Um, we don't know that. We don't know how big it'll be if it is there. We might see the demand continue to outpace the supply and the prices continue to go up. It's not a guarantee either way. And that's why the strategy that you're employing matters. And flipping, if you don't have your systems dialed in, if you don't know flipping cold and, and have multiple exit strategies, I wouldn't recommend flipping right now. If you're in pure commercial real estate, then well, there's more conversation to be had around that, especially if you're in the retail space. The retail space might very well transform even beyond what was already happening pre-COVID. So those are kind of um, strategy contingent caveats around um, what should happen right now, uh, how should you respond to the environment and, and what's coming in the next 60 days and beyond. Um, if you are a long-term buy and hold investor, and specifically I'm speaking about residential, those units that are 1500 a month, the demand for housing isn't going away. In fact, we historically see the demand for housing and rental units in that 1500 range increase if there's a correction. And so regardless, that is a fundamental need that isn't going away, that need for housing and that 1500 residential unit is very secure. So if you're that long-term investor, whether you're Burr um, or a different style of buy and hold, we're looking at that long-term trend. A long-term trend hasn't changed. And that demand for $1,500 living quarters and units has not changed either. So if you're that buy and hold investor, same rule applies. Every day is a good day to make a good deal. There's very specific criteria on what it means to make a good deal. But when you find them, it's still a good time to buy those because you're that long-term investor. I've already done the data and the, and the analysis around the correction of 89. I know that timing the market based on the fundamental data isn't a smart thing to do for that long-term uh, investor. And so, especially in that residential 1500 per month uh, space. I hope that helps. On the financing front, guys, many clients are asking whether or not the lenders are still allowing the use of secured lines of credit for down payments on rental properties. And the answer is yes. Although some lenders have come out with new rules restricting the use of secured line of credits, there are many other lenders on the street that are still allowing you to use your line of credit towards the down payment and closing costs on rental properties. It really boils down to where your file qualifies. That's it for this week, guys. Please join us next week where we will continue our tour of Ontario, getting an update from other hot investment markets. To get notified of our new episodes, please subscribe and press the bell button. See you on the next episode.